Hello, um, today we will be uh, talking about fast Fourier transformation. This will be the first lecture in uh, a two part series. The topics that we will be discussing uh, in this lecture uh, will begin with uh, a description of the Fourier spectrum and the transformation to the Fourier uh, spectrum. We will present this material in as unified a manner as possible and for that purpose we will uh, first talk about spectral analysis of Boolean functions. We will remind ourselves uh, that a Boolean function can be uh, represented uh, in an alternative basis, the parity basis, which is, and the representation in that basis is called its uh, spectrum, if you recall. Uh, we will then discuss the spectral analysis of uh, periodic functions. Periodic functions appear a lot in signal processing, um, and uh, so we will be interested in the spectrum of such periodic functions, which will be linear combinations of sine waves and we will then refine it to uh, talking about discrete periodic functions. These are uh, periodic functions that are sampled at discrete points in time and therefore such periodic functions will be, uh, can be represented as vectors uh, based on the number of points at which they were sampled. And, uh, Therefore, the notion of uh, the spectrum of such a discrete periodic function can be viewed as uh, an alternative basis uh, under which the uh, periodic function is viewed. Um, and this we will uh, establish a clear analogy between uh, the spectral analysis of Boolean functions and the spectral analysis of discrete uh, periodic functions. This will give us a unified way to look at uh, spectral analysis. And uh, now that we have an understanding of, uh, with an understanding of spectral analysis, we will move on to Fourier transforms, which are essentially algorithms to uh, transform a vector from its standard basis to Fourier basis. And once we have an understanding of uh, this transformation, we will uh, focus on uh, a particular algorithm, the fast Fourier transform algorithm that is applicable to uh, some of the Fourier transforms. In particular, this uh, fast Fourier transform algorithm will be applicable to discrete periodic functions. In addition, it will also be applicable to um, um, the Fourier transforms of uh, polynomials. Uh, we will see what that uh, means uh, more, um, more clearly in the subsequent lecture on fast Fourier transforms. And to uh, help us um, understand the need for understand, uh, to, to help us appreciate the need for fast Fourier transforms, uh, we will look at a couple of applications. The first application is drawn from digital signal processing. Uh, many signals that we encounter in real life are uh, sparse in, in the sense that their Fourier spectrum uh, need not have too many terms. Uh, and this uh, sparsity implies that even though the signal may uh, seem complicated in the uh, standard basis or the time domain, the uh, Fourier basis of such signals uh, uh, essentially refers to the frequency basis of a frequency spectrum of the signal and that Fourier basis, the frequency spectrum is often sparse. So it's useful to con convert a signal from its time domain to its frequency uh, domain and that will be our first motivating application. The second motivating application is uh, fast multiplication of polynomials. Uh, we, we will notice that if you want to multiply two polynomials of 
uh, degree d, uh, then the typical algorithm uh, would require uh, theta of d square time. However, uh, we will uh, describe a suitable uh, Fourier transform for polynomials. Uh, we will then show that such uh, uh, transformations can, uh, such Fourier transforms can be computed in O of n log n time, uh, essentially using the fast Fourier transform algorithm. And in this transformed space, we will show that multiplication is much faster. It can be done in uh, O of d time. Uh, so the, um, uh, and, and then we will also show how we can um, recover the polynomial in the standard basis which is again an application of the fast Fourier transformation algorithm. So, the entire uh, polynomial multiplication can be uh, performed in O of d log d time, where d is the degree of the polynomial. This is a significant improvement over the uh, uh, theta of d squared time uh, traditional uh, mu polynomial multiplication algorithm. And then finally, uh, having set the stage with these two motivating applications, we will present the road ahead um, for the, um, the second um, fast Fourier transform uh, lecture. In that uh, lecture, we will uh, delve deeper into an understanding of the fast Fourier transform algorithm in the context of polynomials. We will uh, in detail explain how the uh, fast Fourier transform algorithm uh, can be used to um, convert a polynomial from its standard basis to its appropriate um, uh, Fourier basis and then perform multiplication in that basis and return back to the uh, standard basis all in O of d log d time with all the details mentioned um, as needed. Um, and then we will uh, complete the second lecture with a brief mention of how the fast Fourier transform algorithm explained in the context of polynomials can be applied to signals as well. So now let us uh, uh, look at some Fourier spectra and transforms. Um, we will begin with Boolean functions. And let us uh, recall what a Boolean function is. It is um, a function that takes as input n bits uh, and returns uh, typically um, a real valued number. Uh, this um, such a Boolean function can be used to model a variety of computations. Many real world inputs like graphs, uh, uh, numbers and so on and so forth can be encoded as a binary string and when uh, and this boolean function refers to an n bit encoding of the input and then on a, and a suitable value that is being computed uh, uh, by the function uh, the family of all such boolean functions uh, can be represented as a vector space uh, of 2 power n dimensions. So, in this vector space, each vector is a specific um, Boolean function. The standard basis uh, for this vector space comprises the 2 power n Boolean functions in which um, each of the basis functions outputs 1 for a particular input uh, string. Uh, so, there are, uh, if there are n bits, there are 2 power n possible input strings. A particular basis function would take one of those inputs and output uh, one for that particular input alone and 0 for all other inputs. Now, it is, uh, we looked into details, uh, detail about how this basis function can be used to build any 
um, uh, any uh, function. So, any, any function can be represented as a linear combination of uh, 2 power n such basis functions. So, we also have this alternative Fourier basis for uh, Boolean functions. Uh, there will be uh, 2 power n such parity functions that together form the Fourier basis. Uh, each parity function refers to a subset of the n uh, bits and when all of those uh, subset bits are 1 and others are all 0, that particular parity function will evaluate to a 1. And we looked into the details of how this parity functions are themselves an orthogonal, uh, uh, form an orthogonal basis uh, to this um, vector space. And a, a Fourier transformation therefore, would be uh, a transformation of a vector representation of a function in the standard basis to the vector representation of the same vector in its in the Fourier uh, basis. What is the spectrum of this function? Uh, it is basically the, um, uh, the coefficients of uh, uh, coefficients of the particular function in the Fourier basis. That will be the Fourier spectrum of a particular function. 